I grew up a, a very uh, dorky, weird-looking kid in suburban Seattle. And uh, to make matters uh, worse, another way in which I didn't fit in was uh, my parents were Baha'is, members of the Baha'i faith. And I grew up a member of the Baha'i faith. And um, one of the great things about that was that I had a very Catholic, from the original use of the word Catholic, view of religions. Um, we, we soaked in all kinds of different beliefs. Um, uh, Jehovah's Witnesses would knock on the door, we would invite them in and discuss the Bible with them. We would have Buddhist monks traveling through town stay with us. Um, we had books on Sufism and Sikhism. And I knew about all of these things and I was raised to think about philosophy and religious thought and the soul and the spirit of humankind uh, in a different way. Also really socially progressive teachings of the Baha'i faith, the equality of men and women, the elimination of racial prejudice, the equality of science and religion. So it was a big cauldron of, of big ideas in, in my household. Um, and we were a weird and unhappy family, but nonetheless, that was a really positive thing that came out of it. Then when I, I moved to New York in my 20s, I, um, I really abandoned all that. And so many people do that grow up in religious households. Um, they just abandon the way of their parents. Um, I, uh, I decided there, there couldn't be a God, there was so much suffering in the world, e uh, religion perpetrated so much evil, uh, I wanted to go my own way and take my own journey and what I did was I became an artist and I just focused on being an actor and all of my attention uh, just went to and my, my kind of, my fervor went to theater and acting and I really thought, you know, with my friends that went to school down at NYU, we would do little basement productions of Hedda Gobbler or whatever, and we really thought we could change the world. If we did the right piece of theater in the right way, with the right audience, uh, we could touch people's hearts and we could just blow their minds and just open things up completely. And um, I also focused on my career as an actor a great deal, and I became very me-focused and me-centered just uh, myself and my career and what next and how do I get a better agent and how do I get into TV and movies and um, and then I you know I, I felt a, a, a yearning I came to a crossroads um, I hit bottom in a way I was really unhappy um, and realized that I just wanted something more about from the experience of being alive I was like I was doing great plays it wasn't changing the world. I was getting good agents and doing film and TV and I wasn't happier. I was like, wow, there's, there's an unease inside of me. And that led me back on my kind of more spiritual path uh, to the Baha'i faith in a new and fresher way, in a more uh, realized way. And um, I came to also understand at that point that there was no difference between being devout and being an artist. There's no difference between creativity and spirituality and philosophy. And that's what Soul Pancake, the book, and soulpancake.com are about is it's all about human expression. And it's all about seeking to transcend. It's about that yearning. And whether it's through science or through art, through service, uh, through worship, it's the human experience of longing to connect with people, to connect with the, the energy and throughout creation. And uh, we compartmentalize all of these things. And I realize, oh, it's all the same thing. I play Dwight. That's just as much me being a service and, and, a, and worshiping as if I'm on my knees in some temple somewhere or, or bowing my head in prayer to God in some way. Um, it's really all just the same thing. I sleep like a log. I always have. I just, I hit the pillow and it's like, um, what keeps my wife up at night is my horrific snoring, which I gotta get taken care of. And I need to get those nose strips. Mm -hmm.